In this lesson, we are going to break down the format of the issue essay. Some of what we cover in this lesson is a review of the concepts addressed in earlier lessons. However, this is the first time we'll be breaking it down from start to finish. So let's begin at the beginning, the introduction. Here are the key points to remember when composing an introduction. First and foremost, keep the intro short and sweet. The function of the introduction is very straightforward, so there's no need to spend too much time or effort here. There are quite a few elements an introduction could have, but for this essay, an introduction really only needs to be about two to three sentences. There is, of course, one element an issue essay must contain, and that is a thesis statement. It's possible to still earn a score of five with a one-sentence introduction if that one sentence is a clear, direct thesis statement. Of course, the rest of the essay would have to be fairly outstanding. But hey, it is possible, and that speaks to just how essential the thesis is to the issue introduction. The thesis statement should take a clear stance on the issue presented in the prompt. Remember, an essay that takes a side tends to be much easier to write than an essay that tries to argue both slides. One of the elements that an introduction might include is a preview of the points that will be elaborated on throughout the body paragraphs. Including a preview of talking points demonstrates a higher level of organization and basically prepares your reader for what to expect before they dive into the heart of the essay. Stronger writers do tend to include talking points in their introduction, but doing so is not at all necessary for a good score. And now, it's time to take a look at our government prompts again, so that it's fresh in our minds as we check out an introduction example. So go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to read through this a little bit more slowly, uh, and then come back when you're finished and we'll kind of talk through it. So this one is really short and sweet. Access to food, shelter, education, healthcare, and other basic needs are all contingent on access to money. Thus, while a government may serve many purposes, its primary role is to ensure the economic safety of its citizens. This thesis works great, and it really is only two sentences. Also, in the highlighted portion, you can see that the writer has made clear that the scope will be narrowed to discussing safety in terms of the economy. And here we can see that the thesis is very clearly stated. There's no question about which side this author is going to argue. So for a three, four, or even some fives, this is all the introduction needs to do. So let's move on to the next piece of the issue essay, the body paragraphs. Our body paragraphs will come together based on our brainstorms and our outlines. Ideally, we will have two body paragraphs that support our side of the argument and one body paragraph that discusses the counter argument. Here's what we need to remember about the elements of our body paragraphs. Each body paragraph should be focused on one point that you develop throughout the paragraph. That point is typically introduced in the topic sentence and then explained and supported through evidence as the paragraph is developed further. It's key to remember that you want to try to avoid overly broad analysis. General statements about a claim are not as convincing as well-detailed specific evidence. So, try to remember that the majority of your score is based on how well your points are developed within your body paragraphs. Therefore, the more detailed and thorough the analysis, the more likely it is that the essay will score well. Your analysis should thoroughly explore at least one, although two really is ideal, specific supporting examples. As mentioned in the last lesson, your first body paragraph should detail your strongest talking points and supporting examples. Putting your best foot forward will help you make a strong first impression on your reader who will see from the outset that you have the skills to organize and support your ideas well. Again, Go ahead and pause the video here, take a moment to read through this body paragraph example, and as you read, consider how this one handles claims and support. Pay attention to how those claims are developed through the supporting evidence. Okay, let's talk about this one. This is a strong body paragraph. So if you're thinking, wow, that seems kind of high level, this is a higher scoring essay. So this would be something like a five or even maybe a six. 
So let's check out how the points are developed here. It begins with a clear topic sentence. And the second sentence further explains the consequences mentioned in the first. The third sentence claims that the government has the power to ease the economic burdens on its citizens, which leads immediately into the example of Roosevelt's New Deal as supporting evidence for the claim. Now, there really isn't a lot of knowledge about FDR or the New Deal included here. However, what makes it convincing is that the writer has narrowed the scope to the economic aid and resulting economic outcome of the New Deal. This example is intended to expand upon the government's financial responsibilities and almost never wavers from that spin on the prompt. The details provide evidence of a specific event that showed the need for the government to prioritize the economic safety of its citizens. In general, the paragraph is well organized with transitions moving the points along and use of higher level language complexity. But there's certainly no uh, Victorian literature level vocabulary here, and there really doesn't need to be. Now let's move on to the counter argument paragraph. Even if it's just a sentence or two that acknowledges the other side of the argument, try to include this element. Essays with counter examples demonstrate higher level reasoning. So what exactly is a counter argument paragraph? The paragraph is an opportunity to acknowledge that there is another side to the argument. You are aware that other people have an opinion that doesn't align with your own, but at the end of the day, your evidence will show that your side is superior. You get to be the winner here. So how do we go about framing this? Well, we don't want to do such a good job of discussing the other side that we end up making the case that it's just as valid as the side that we're on. That would undo all of our hard reasoned work. Rather, we should develop the counterexample in a limited way. The whole point is to show that you are aware of the other side of the thing you are arguing, but that your side is still the best. You can think of the counter argument as the exception to the rule. And that is to say, you can frame it as, okay, the other side isn't 100% wrong. They might be right in a few limited situations. However, you still want to indicate that you are right 99% of the time. As before, please pause the video here. As you read, notice the acknowledgement and immediate rebuttal of the opposing side's position. Okay, this counter argument begins with a clear transition then briefly explains two points that the opposition might argue. Government assistance programs are too expensive and they lead to welfare dependency. And here the writer acknowledges that yes, it's true, some people might take advantage of the system, but then the writer quickly turns the tables on that line of thinking. So the writer is acknowledging that they are right sometimes, but he or she or they are right the majority of the time. Ergo, ergo, our side is stronger. And again, this paragraph doesn't need to do much more than what you see here. A few more details might improve it, perhaps naming or creating a source for the long-term study, but it does a fine job as is. And that brings us to the last piece, the conclusion. The bulk of your essay is your body paragraphs. The conclusion really just needs to quickly wrap everything up. And here's what it needs. It needs to be very short. In it, you should restate your thesis and recap the main points of each supporting paragraph. In total, this only needs to be about one to two sentences. The conclusion isn't an essential element of a good score. It's really more about ticking that last box for organization. And by just having a conclusion, that signals to your reader that you've said all you're going to say about the issue. So the last thing we'll do in this lesson is check out an example of a conclusion. You'll notice that this conclusion recaps the examples and restates the thesis. As long as you restate and recap, the order you do it in doesn't really matter. This conclusion is short and sweet. And with that, your essay is 
complete.